just write the book. He finishes the book. And I want you to think about that in your life. No matter what kind of tragedies come along, God is writing that book. There's two kinds of stories. One kind of story is a life without Christ. And that story always ends in tragedy. That's not a story you want to hear. It always ends in tragedy. Because if you die and you don't go to heaven, well, you know where you go. That's a tragedy. I don't care what that life was. The other kind of story is the Christ story, where Jesus comes into your life and changes your life. That is a victorious story, no matter who you are. The greatest story that anyone can tell is their own story, their own testimony. testimony. And tonight I wanted to tell my testimony because God is the author and finisher of my faith. <clears throat> like some of you, you may not have a mom, you may not have a dad, you may not have either. But you do have a family here. When I was about six months old, I lived with just my mother in one part of the in one part of America, and my dad and my brother and sister lived in another part of America. Well, she decided that, and again, I was six months old, I was a little baby, she decided she couldn't handle me anymore. So she strapped me to a table, got on a bus, and left, and went to a long, place, a long ways away to another place to be with my dad. When they got there, they said, where is Bill? She said, I just couldn't take him anymore. I left him. She abandoned me. So they took an emergency flight, <clears throat> came to where we were, and it was so cold in the apartment where I lived that the diaper I had on was frozen to the table. They had to put me in a hospital and save my life. I grew up, after that, I grew up with my brother and my sister, and we had a pretty tragic, tough life. Now, I'm telling you all this for a reason, because God's the finisher of, of my faith. I'm not doing this just so you feel sorry for me. Well, I had a brother and a sister and two parents, and even though they were parents, they did a very bad job of taking care of us. They were not Christian. My dad drank all the time. And my mother uh, was lazy, didn't work, she didn't try. And we would, my brother and I, would get into all kinds of trouble. We, we rarely had food in the house, so my brother and I would go to the neighbors and dig in the trash looking for food. And the food we did have in our house came from a local place that gives away food. So it was very common for us not to have any food. So we would go dig in the trash or we ask the neighbors for food, whatever we could do. <clears throat> We'd also get into a lot of trouble. I was caught one time throwing rocks off of a bridge onto the highway. So the cars came and hit the, the rock. So we got in trouble for that. We constantly got into trouble because there was no supervision. Finally, the courts told my parents, if your two boys get into any more trouble, we're taking them away. Well, one day we decided to go into a church and we took some matches and we started the church on fire. I was six years old. And we started a church on fire at six years old. Well, it wasn't a couple days later, a police car picked us up and took us to three different homes. My brother went to an orphanage. My sister was adopted into a family. And I was put in a what they call a foster home, which means somebody's just taking care of you. So even though I had a mom and dad, a foster parents, they were not my real parents. Well, 
I thought that was going to be a new life. I thought it was going to be great because there was plenty of food, but one thing it lacked was love. There was no love in that house. My mother would beat me. She would lock me in a room. In fact, she would get so mad at me, she would lock me in a room for a week or two weeks at a time. Wouldn't let anybody talk to me. My dad wouldn't come and see me. My sisters wouldn't come and see me. Nobody would come, was allowed to come in there and see me. And she would just give me bread and water. During that time, she would tell me how ugly I was, how stupid I was. And she said, you will never be, be anything. You will never amount to anything. Well, who tells those kind of lies? The devil. But here's the problem. I believe those lies. I heard it so much all the time that I believe those lies. Satan was always there. To say, You're ugly. You're stupid. No one likes you. No one loves you. By the time I was 16, I'd run away from home about 10 times. But I always ended up coming back. At that point in my life, I was at rock bottom. I really didn't want to live any longer. I knew no one loved me. I knew no one cared. That's what I, at least that's what I believed. So one day I was over at a friend's house. His name was David Arns. And David said to me, Bill, if you died today, do you think you'd go to heaven? And I said, yeah. He goes, why, why do you think that? I said, well, I believe in God. I've been baptized. I'll go to heaven. And I said, why? What do, you, what do you think? He said, I think you're going to hell. Just like that. I think you're going to hell. And I said, what do I? And my immediate thought was, even God doesn't love me. God wants to send me to hell. Then he said something very profound. He said, but God loves you. He does not want you to go to hell. He wants you to go to heaven. You need to ask Jesus into your heart. Ask him to forgive you for your sins. And when Jesus comes into your heart, you'll be born again. And your life will start new. And that's exactly what happened. See, again, God is the author and finisher of our faith. And even though we have all this tragedy, the breaking point in your life is the day Jesus comes into your life. And that is the thing that is going to change your life. You can either have a wonderful ending or a tragic ending. And I'm hoping everyone here has been saved because you're going to have a wonderful life. My mother told me, my foster mother told me I was stupid, ugly, would never amount to anything. I'm talking to kids in Nagaland. I'm from America. I've been all over the world with these people. I'd say that's amounting to something. I'm talking to you today. I'd say that's amounting to something. The devil is a big fat liar and do not let him tell you anything. I did it for years and years and years. I let him tell me lies. But I'm not doing that anymore. God truly is the author and finisher of my faith. And he changed my life at 16. And even though it took me a long time to get past where I was, many times I would think, I am stupid. I, I can't do this. I, I'm ugly. No one likes me. But God has, over time, revealed to me, that's just lies. Don't, do not believe those lies. You are a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful group of kids. I mean, we, we've been all over. I can honestly tell you, I haven't seen any group any better than this group right here. We're not even, I'm serious. You guys love each other. You're great for each other. You're a family. Even though this family is different than other families, it's a family. 
Fan Pong is doing an awesome job. Anyway, I just want you to know that from the bottom of my heart, we really love you guys. And I want God to inspire you. Always remember that God is, in fact, the author and finisher of your faith. Keep going. Tomorrow's another. If you have a bad day, you feel like, I can't do it. I'm, I'm not going to go anywhere in life. Tomorrow's another day. Start over the next day. Because those little trials is exactly what God gives us to make us better. And the greatest testimony you're ever going to have in your life is your own testimony. That's going to be a powerful testimony because you let Jesus come into your life. And that's all I really have. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Bill.